How many of you would like to see your team be able to be so effective you can manage through these next five years of change with great success? How many of you feel that conviction? It's good to see this because this is at the core of the research we've been doing at Stanford for the last 30 years. What we've been doing is looking at 17 industries that have gone through extraordinary and excruciating change. We looked at organizations, only those that had been successful for 20 years or more. We wanted measurable, demonstrable success. And the good news is that we found, when we did the global survey, that there were five principles that were necessary to manage change during turbulent periods like this in all of the industries. We're going to talk about those five. Mark did a great job today. As usual, he was helping us through our experience and through all of his experience and really asking us the tough questions. So we really appreciate him coming today. Thank you. And the difference we found was fundamentally we weren't hiring and recruiting people who absolutely passionately felt like owner operators that loved dealing with people. And what they own is not the store, what they own is the relationship with that customer. Mark really tailored the message to what we're focused on right, right now, which is customer service, and spoke about how critical it is to develop passion with your teams and to develop a drive for success and a drive for excellence in order to deliver customer service. So it was really the perfect message for our team today. Principle number two has to do with this idea of of being in a constant process of personal development. Now, it sounds like a cliche to say that the road to excellence is always a journey, but one of the shocking things about being able to sit down with Steve Jobs or with Nelson Mandela was that they were never done. You know, you'd think they'd arrived, right? You'd think that they had it all wrapped up. In fact, if you didn't know who they were, in private, they talked about failure so much, you'd think these people were losers. They were always looking for a better way. I never met an Olympic athlete who didn't think that she could run further, faster, better next time. It was always about getting better. It's like, when do we rest? And we found that that's a dangerous view in a company as well. You know, we just set goals, we met those goals, we've achieved a lot, now you're asking us to grow again? What? Can't we just rest on our laurels? Can we not just mess with the system we've worked so hard to build? We found that that's kind of dangerous thinking, unfortunately. It's rational thinking, but it's dangerous. Because the organizations and individuals that don't continue to set the big goals lose market share within three to five years. And they're out of business within 10 to 20 years. You were able to talk about innovation being much more than just product, or what's the next i this or i that or i cloud, but being much more about how we look at things, how we do in our business, so a spot on. I'm leaving this room today feeling more empowered than ever to take on the challenges that are going to meet me today and thereafter. So thank you, Mark. All of us here are mentors. People look at us under a magnifying glass. They're watching our behavior. They're looking for exceptions to what we say and what we do. And what we can really do best in managing change and in recruiting people to that change is to think of ourselves as mentors and fight for each other rather than against each other. The power of a photograph is absolutely disruptive to the audience because if you think about all the charts, the Gantt charts, if you think about all the metrics that they were filled with the last couple of days, first of all, having you as the last speaker was most powerful because what you did was speak with them, not to them. And the power of a photograph it has such simplicity that it crosses education, demography. It's something that everyone can relate to. And third, you chose platinum names and faces that they can relate to, like Richard Branson. So I think your style is off the chart. Hi, I'm uh, Sean Jackson with Meridian Credit Union from Ontario, Canada. Uh, I just had a great session with Mark Thompson and a group of Credit Union CEOs from uh, Canada shared with us uh, the, the results of a lot of his interactions and interviews with uh, some tremendous leaders and highly recommend any time or, or opportunity you get to spend with Mark. Uh, uh, a wonderful coach. Thanks, Mark. More than any other factor that inspires people to do the work that you want them to do, there's one factor that trumps it all, the relationship with the boss. Let's talk about trust. An interesting guy who had challenges with trust was Richard Branson at, at Virgin. He wanted to start an airline. And this airline, Virgin Atlantic, was something that his management team and his board resisted for a very long time. My fellow directors on the record company, when I said I wanted to start an airline, you know, we're, we're apoplectic, and, um, and nobody expected us to succeed. And I wasn't sure, but I just 
felt that you know, traveling on other people's airlines was not a pleasant experience. And I just felt um, it, 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 there must be a way of doing it better. And he did find a better way. When something goes wrong, usually you're trying to figure out what's gone wrong. So there's a hesitation, or it takes some time to, to be able to react. This year is an anniversary for me. And if on my anniversary at our party, my wife asked me in public, and I love her very much, and, and she says, honey, do you love me? And my response is, <laughs> yes, absolutely. How much closer to the couch would I be that night? Now, it turns out in the research that we've done on interactions and credibility and trust, what we found at the lab is that the amount of time that you take to respond reduces your credibility proportionately. In other words, silence is not golden. Mark's presentation was absolutely amazing. His passion showed through and through. He met with all of us for our executive um, breakfast this morning and shared so many great things about himself and how we really all connect as one. Mark was absolutely fantastic and he hit a home run. Our franchisees could relate to everything that he had to say. He was amazing. Forbes magazine named Thompson one of the top 100 venture investors with the Midas touch. And he's currently an investor in companies like Facebook and Apple Computer's number one app provider for the iPhone and iPad. Mark is program chairman of the American Express Peter Drucker Leadership video series. ABC News calls Mark Thompson the Napoleon Hill of the 21st century. Tony Robbins says Thompson will inspire you to greater business results with your heart and your head. Visa International says Mark Thompson's keynote solves business problems and hits the bullseye for your organization. Sir Richard Branson says success built to last reveals a meaningful secret formula for success.